Hello friends, welcome to Stories with Arna. <clears throat> Today we are going to read Osborne first reading, The Runaway Princess. Retold by Rosie Dickens, illustrated by Elodie Caudray, read by Vishnupriya and Arna. Excellent, let us start reading The Runaway Princess. Princess. Chapter 1 there was once a happy king. He lived with his queen and her little sister in a magnificent mountain palace. What is magnificent? Magnificent means something very grand and beautiful. The palace was filled with treasures and wonders. The most wonderful of all was a magic donkey who could turn straw into gold. Oh wow, that's a very interesting magical power the donkey had. Can you spot some gold coins here? Yes, that's right, here. But the king's happiness did not last, for his dear queen fell ill. The doctors said she didn't have long to live. Promise me something. She begged her husband. Anything, vowed the king. Don't marry again, she whispered, until you find a wife as good as me. And then she died. Now the king's heart grew cold. As the years went by, people begged him to remarry. Who will rule after you? You need a child. That's what his court people are advising him and telling him to do. But he always refused. There is no one as good as my queen, he snapped. And so he grew old and cruel with only Anna, the queen's sister, for his company. Chapter 2 The Proposal Princess Anna was much younger than the queen. But she grew up to be just as beautiful and even more kind. In time, even the king noticed how lovely she was. Now I can keep my promise, he decided. I shall marry you, he said. <gasps> Anna's heart sank. She couldn't marry this cruel old man. But she was too frightened and afraid to tell him. Then she had an idea. I'll set him an impossible task. What is impossible? Impossible means something that is not easy to do. But with proper effort, everything is possible. So we should always try and give our best. I could never marry without a dress as beautiful as the sky, she said. The king snapped his fingers. Fetch my best dressmakers, he ordered. That night, the king gave Anna a dress of shimmering blue, embroidered all over with silky clouds. Now you can marry me, he said. Such a pretty dress, right? Anna thought quickly. Not without a dress, as beautiful as the moon, she replied. Again the king snapped his fingers. Get those dressmakers back here, he said. The next day, there was a dress of shining silver trimmed with glowing moonstones. Now you can marry me, he said. Oh, wow, look at this beautiful dress. Not without a dress as beautiful as the sun, pleaded the poor princess. Hey, can you spot the sun for me? Yes, here it is. Correct. So the king snapped his fingers again. Let's do it again. The next day, there was a dress of glittering gold scattered with scarlet rubies. Now, said the king, 
Anna was in despair. There is one more thing, she pleaded. I'd like a cloak of donkey skin. And not any old skin. It must be from a magic donkey. He'd never harm his donkey, Anna is thinking here. The next day, the king presented Anna with a shaggy donkey skin cloak. Oh no, poor donkey, thought the princess. We'll be married tomorrow, he told her. Uh oh. Anna bowed her head. There's only one thing left to do, she decided. Run away. When the king was in bed, she bundled up her dresses, put on the cloak and crept downstairs. Then she smeared her face with ash and disappeared into the night. I'll never have to see him again, she thought. What is the meaning of smeared? Smeared means covering yourself with something. Like she covered her face with ash so that no one could recognize who she was. Chapter 3 Princess Donkey Skin No one took any notice of the shabby girl in the donkey skin cloak. She walked on and on far beyond the king's lands until she came to a farmhouse by a forest. The farmer's wife looked curiously at Anna. What is your name? she asked. Anna didn't answer. <laughs> I'll call you donkey skin, laughed the woman. If you're looking for work, we need a girl to look after the geese. Donkey skin worked hard. The farmer and his wife grew very fond of her. They never guessed their goose girl was a runaway princess. Sometimes, as she herded the geese, Anna heard hunting horns in the forest. One day, she spotted a handsome prince among the trees. She gazed shyly at the prince. Then she looked sadly at her tattered cloak. If only I could be a princess again. She she's so sad here. Ah. That evening she hid in her room and took out the sky blue dress. Oh, that's a gorgeous dress. The prince was riding home when he spotted the farmhouse. I'll stop and ask for a drink, he decided. One of the windows glowed with a mysterious blue light. Inside, the prince saw a girl in a shimmering blue dress. She's as beautiful as the sky, he thought, losing his heart to her. Suddenly, he felt too shy to knock. He rode slowly back to his castle, dreaming about the mysterious girl. Who was she? He's thinking. The next day, the prince sent a messenger to the farm. But there was no sign of a girl in a sky blue dress. The messenger is asking the farmer and his wife, but they don't know about that girl. Chapter 4 A Cake and a Ring the prince sent out messengers far and wide. None of them could find the mystery girl. Hoping against hope, the prince rode back to the farm. This time, a silver light shone from one of the windows. His heart leaped. Could it be? The girl was in the kitchen, dressed in shining silver. She is as beautiful as the moon, sighed the prince. He knocked eagerly, then opened the door. Quick as a flash, Anna hid, leaving a cake cooling on the table. Oh, she is under the table and he cannot see her. 
It smelled so good, the prince couldn't help taking a bite. It was deliciously sweet and soft. And then his teeth crunched on something hard. Ouch! He spat out a tiny gold ring. It's hers, he realized. It must have fallen off while she was cooking. Oh, so he found Anna's ring, is it? Let's see. The ring gave the prince an idea. He galloped back to his castle to make a royal decree. Decree means order. I'll marry the girl whose fingers fits this ring. Hundreds of girls came to try the ring, from countesses to chambermaids. It didn't fit any of them. Anna stood at the back of the great hall, wrapped in her donkey skin cloak. Can you spot where she is? Yes, here she is, right behind all the other beautiful ladies trying to wear that ring. Is there anyone else? asked the prince eventually. Just that girl in the shabby cloak. <laughs> laughed a courtier. The prince looked into Anna's eyes. Let her try the ring, he insisted. The courtier frowned. You don't want to marry her, said one of the girls when she saw Anna, thinking we don't know who she is. Anna held out her hand. The ring was a perfect fit. Will you marry me? Asked the prince. Yes, said Anna, letting the cloak slip from her shoulders. Everyone gasped. <gasps> How beautiful she is looking in her sun dress. Remember the third dress they made? Yes. Her dress shone with gold and rubies, filling the hall with golden light. But her golden hair and rosy cheeks shone even brighter. She is as beautiful as the sun, sighed the courtiers. The prince smiled at Anna. I knew I'd find you, he whispered happily. The wedding was held a few days later. The king invited royal guests from around the world. Anna invited the kind farmer and his wife. Anna told their guests her whole story. But now I'll never run away again, she finished gazing joyfully at her prince. And that's the story of the runaway princess. Hope you had fun reading with us. Don't forget to subscribe. And ring the bell icon for all the updates on our videos. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.